Now let's talk about market time. Uh, this is another way to measure performance, uh, perhaps more of uh, a way to measure active performance, which is to say a test of the forecasting ability of a manager. Um, in other words, can a manager actually predict market movements as their uh, timing skill? This is often the type of uh, active management skill that is alluded to by, by managers. Um, of course, this is exactly the sort of thing that a passive investment will not do. So you can have a portfolio optimal uh, in terms of model portfolio theory, mean variance optimality, uh, trading strategy uh, that is executed skillfully. It just isn't based around timing the market. But whenever someone makes a claim of being able to time the market, uh, this would be the sort of thinking you would want to follow, as outlined uh, below. What you might want to do is you want to consider, well, what would you actually do if you could time the market? Uh, you'd probably want to shift back and forth between a risky and a riskless asset. You'd want to be in the risky asset when uh, things were expected to be good, and you'd want to be in the riskless asset uh, when things were expected to be bad. Um, and let's say we'll say that W is the weight in the risky asset, and 1 minus W, therefore, is the weight in the riskless asset. Now, if you did just sort of set a mix between the two and left it, that would be a passive investment strategy. Uh, you'd probably pick your allocation to the risky asset uh, just based on your coefficient of risk aversion. You'd fall somewhere on that capital market line. Um, and you'd be allocated statically between the optimal risky and riskless portfolios. But in a way, what a market timer says is that I can uh, adjust the W, uh, the weight in the risky asset, uh, such that I can actually increase performance, uh, because I know when favorable and less favorable periods are coming. And of course, the way that we, you would want to do this, if you indeed could, is you would want to increase your weight in the risky asset when that is expected to perform well, and you'd want to exit it and invest in the risk-free asset more when it is expected to perform poorly. Uh, because remember, the risky portfolio won't always beat the risk-free asset, otherwise that would be a risk-free asset. Um, so essentially, when the risky portfolio is expected to underperform, that's when you would want to go to the risky, uh, risk-free asset. So, essentially then, if you have a simple model with just a uh, market portfolio of optimal, uh, mean variance optimal, uh, risky assets and the risk-free asset, then those are the only two things that you will invest in, uh, similar to what you'd get under portfolio theory, uh, what you would have is essentially this sort of bivariate payoff. Um, when it's good to be in the market, you would earn the market return, and when it's bad to be in the market, you would earn the risk-free return. So the ideal market timing strategy would sort of look like, like that. If the market return were above the risk-free rate, you would hold it. And if the market return were below the risk-free rate, where the market returns fall on the horizontal axis and the portfolio returns under hypothetical market timing fall on the vertical, uh, then if the market were to underperform the risk-free rate, you just go to the risk-free asset and earn uh, that. In other words, you'd avoid the pain of market losses. Uh, to put some numbers on this, let's say that we have payoffs for these two assets, following our idea of payoff trees. Uh, for the risk-free asset, we've got 5% payoff in both cases, both states of the world, uh, let's say good state and bad state, with equal probabilities. Well, the risk-free asset, of course, will pay you the same in both. The risky asset will pay you a lot in the good state, and will actually lose in the bad state, and again, have the same probabilities, of course. So then a market timer uh, should actually be able to earn 
the risky asset payoff in the good state and the risk-free asset payoff in the bad state. Uh, what would be the expected return to the market timing portfolio? Well, it would just be the chance of the good state times the payoff in that good state, plus the chance of the bad state times the payoff in that state. In other words, a expected value of this payoff tree, and that would be as high as 17.5%. Uh, the expected return to the market, of course, uh, would be just the same for the risky asset, the market's payoff tree here. So 50% chance of that same payoff of 30, but then 50% chance of a loss of 10, uh, a significantly lower uh, 10%. Um, so what we can do is that we can actually look at performance of uh, individual portfolio managers, and if indeed they were able to, over a long time horizon, uh, realize returns uh, that are market beating, uh, perhaps one reason would be due to this uh, market timing ability. And indeed, 17.5 uh, might not even be the limit because, for example, if the market timer knows that the state of the world is going to be good, uh, they can even hold a uh, levered portfolio in the risky asset. In other words, they could borrow at the risk-free rate and invest even more in the uh, risky asset, potentially earning some multiple of the 30% good state payoff. Uh, but, you know, in, in the real world, you might not have this sort of completely binary investment strategy. Uh, you might actually simply uh, move out of the market partially when you think bad times are coming and move into the market more aggressively uh, when you think good times are ahead. Um, and this is something that if you read financial news, you'll often hear of famous investors either increasing or decreasing their exposures to risk assets uh, because they're making these sorts of market timing uh, claims. And if you think about it, you could actually then test for this uh, because you know what's going to happen with your portfolio's beta. If you look at the excess returns relative to the risk-free rate on the vertical axis and the excess returns to the market portfolio on the horizontal, uh, you know that if you are able to successfully market time, uh, your beta is effectively going to be um, non-linear. It's going to be higher in good times when the market return is positive above the risk-free rate, and it's going to be lower in bad times when the market return is uh, below the risk-free rate. So how can you actually test for this non-linearity in beta exposures? Um, usually it's done with a regression analysis, uh, so we can either test for the presence of uh, an indicator variable, or we could look at a return square term. Of course, remember when we estimate the market exposure of our portfolio, we're just going to run a uh, linear type of term for a cap and regression. Uh, what we can do is we can actually then also add a nonlinear term. And I would actually then pick up this idea of a nonlinear response uh, to, to market performance. But uh, a simpler market timing measure uh, would just sort of be to uh, look at an, an accuracy rate. Where what we can do is we can, since managers do go public with their predictions, uh, we can actually say, well, how many times did you make a bullish market forecast where you suggested that it would be good to increase exposure uh, relative to how many times that actually turned out to be the case? And how many times did you make a correct uh, bearish 
forecast, in other words, a call to reduce market exposure uh, relative to how many times that turned out to be the case. Uh, and then what we can do is we can just add those two probabilities up and subtract one. And really, if you are a successful market timer, uh, that would mean that your uh, hit rate for both uh, should be above 50%, or at least uh, your hit rate for one should be above 50% sufficiently to offset a lower hit rate than the other, uh, such that when you add them up together, uh, your hit rate would exceed one. Uh, because think about it this way, let's say that um, a manager with no innate market timing ability will just flip a coin. And if it lands heads, they will say that this is going to be a bull market. And if it lands tails, they'll say it's going to be a bear market. What is this manager's accuracy in terms of predicting uh, bull markets correctly? Well, one out of every other two. Um, in other words, over a long enough run, if you are literally just 50% accurate, uh, you'll call every other bull market. Similarly, you'll call every other bear market as well, uh, because again, your probability of making a correct call is going to be 50-50 based on a coin flip. Uh, then if you add those up, add one half, add another one half, and subtract one, uh, then you'll see that your market timing ability test will be zero. So the coin flip manager um, would not have market timing skill. However, a manager that might have an edge, for example, in calling uh, bull markets, um, and perhaps no edge in calling bear markets, might have then P1 uh, greater, than, greater than one half. And if they are at least no worse than a coin flip in calling bear markets, well, then they're market timing ability measure would be a little bit greater than one. And the more accurate they were in calling one or the other, uh, the greater it would be. So this is sort of a simple way to measure market timing, and people usually will go to the regression analyses on the uh, prior slide for a more complex one. Uh, but at bottom, the saying that there are no gray-haired market timers is... Uh, is, is really important here. It's uh, not likely that one will be able to time the market in a sustainable, repeatable fashion, such that it would be picked up in even the simple uh, accuracy test, much less in linear regression. But that's sort of how you would go about detecting market timing ability, which is, of course, a separate type of um, superior return uh, to the risk-adjusted performance measures uh, that we've talked about before, uh, but can also generate um, performance that would look uh, superior on risk-adjusted terms. Of course, if you uh, control for whatever risk factors or total risk of a market timing strategy.